you already know, man, Mr. J Hill, I'm in the building. Another episode of um, Conversation Series is a conversation with creatives, a conversation with anybody that's just like-minded, you know what I'm saying? I might have some good conversations, some good speaking points. My dog, Vinny Vega, is in the building. So my boy. What up, dog? Yo, I feel like we known each other for a minute now, always oh, yeah. supported each other. Did we ever do an interview? I don't think we. I met you in the interview. That's how we okay, met. Okay, okay. BBC Radio. Yeah, I remember. With you and the girls. That's how. Yeah, we Raven. Met. It's crazy. We were just talking about that. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. Damn, bro. Yep. You, Raven, and, and TK. TK. Yep. Y'all did Yo. the interview for me, and I was on the come up then. That was like 2018, some shit like that. Damn. So how? Damn, bro. So how has everything been since then? It's been a long time. It's been a long time, bro. Damn. It's been a a, a a bumpy road. It's also been a blessing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I learned a lot. I took some L's, and now I'm, this year is just like I feel like I I learned everything I could learn. I've been right. through everything I could been through. That is just it's time to. You know Why what you mean? say it's been a bumpy road? What's been bumpy for you? Um, just life in and out of things. You know what I'm saying? In and out of situations that could just hinder what you got going on, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? In life, some things you can't put to the side all the time. You got to confront them things right then and there. So I feel like I got everything behind me now, and I'm just, I can focus. Focus mm -hmm. on the music, right? Yeah, man. Yo, how, Edgewood, I always like to talk about this. It bro. has it. What's up, baby? Because I feel <laughs> like, yo, y'all really put on for just, I don't even know how to, just making it being okay to be from, not the city right right like i feel like that's my first time ever seeing a group of people outside of the city of baltimore mm -hmm. really like man nah we ain't from baltimore city we from edgewood right and Straight it was okay up. with it and like i feel like where do you think that came from bro like where did like that that confidence um the city itself you mm. feel me the city of edgewood itself is just a bunch of people from other places, you feel mm. what I'm saying? Like when you go to Edgewood, you might you're gonna find people from Edgewood, nevertheless. But it's just a city built of people from Philadelphia, D.C., Baltimore, New York. Or, you know what I mean? Right. That just all end up in one area. And dudes like us who've been here 10, 15 plus years is like this is home. You know okay. what I'm saying? This place raised me. I lost my virginity here. I got my I fight. You know what I mean? Like right. So you get a sense of it's happening in the Baltimore City. It shit happening around the corner from my house. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't gotta be from here to have this persona to be somebody else because the nigga got killed around the corner from me. You know what I'm saying? And the nigga got his house raided across the street. You feel what I'm saying? So you is what I loved about it, bro, because when I met you and like just even like the people I met with you, it's crazy because I know when I was young and we um when um Tay Rock was coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody kept saying Baltimore. But you know, I mean, as a young and we like we ain't really take heed into it until we was old enough to understand. He was like, nah, that right. ain't that ain't Baltimore, that ain't Baltimore. Right. But then when I met y'all, I never heard you guys say Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. Ever. Mm -hmm. Like I think for Tay Rock, it was really him just putting on for the area, which right. is dope. You know what right. I'm saying? Because right. pe most people would know Baltimore. Right. And I understand that now. But when I was younger, I didn't really understand. Right. But when I met you guys, it never was misconstrued. It was always Edgewood, right? And that's up. what I fuck with. I was like, yo, that's so dope. I yeah. love that. Yeah, that's the town, man. Shout out to everybody back home who working. It's so much talent I'm back home. Like, I feel like once one of us break the barrier, which we on our way to, bro, that's going to be the mixing pot for a lot of stuff that mm. comes out of Maryland. And I was going to ask you, to how is the music there? Like, how is the music scene there, period, in general? Um, we building it, you feel me? It's artist by artist, team by team. It's coming along, you feel what I'm saying? Um, we still working on the camaraderie part of it. Mm. Everybody being like, trying to just be on one accordance, you know what I mean? Kind of do things together in the sense of that's what's gonna get us to where we need to go as a town. But I feel like the music scene is growing. Like from especially from when I first met you and when we started to where we are now, it's like, you know, we on our way. Yo, do you think in, in any city that we ever gonna be together? Cause I feel like we got the same thing, the same issue in Baltimore. And I'm pretty sure other cities have the same issue if we can just come together. But it's like, no matter where you go, we always gonna be having this fight of, can we just come together? Can we band together like Atlanta, right? But I'm sure as artists in Atlanta think that it's they not, don't It's band not together. like that. Exactly, right, right, right? right? Like, do you think that's a universal problem? It is, it is a universal problem. And to be honest with you, it's a culture problem. Mm, that's you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not even just, it's a culture thing. It's just. We just got to get out of that. Bro, I was I was just having this conversation, not to cut you off, mm -hmm. I was with my daughter, and I was saying, you know, like, it's crazy because, you know, white people separated us through slavery, mm -hmm. and then we ended up separating each other 
because of just that's how we came up. That's what we were taught. Right. And like we gotta eventually break this curse, but because it's we're so deep, the history goes back so far. Yep. That's all we know, and it's so it's harder to break that. It's harder to break a habit than it is to form it. Right. right. So it's like, and I think that's what it is, just in our culture in general. It is, and and that's just not with music. That's with anything in anything. our culture. Anything. You know, clothing lines, entrepreneurs is food, uh, girls with lashes and hair. It's everything. everything you yeah. know what I mean? You got to break that barrier. That's just, in our culture, they just want to see somebody else like it. Mm. They want to see somebody else cool be like, oh, that was hot. Facts. For them to be like, yeah, I want to do that shit too. Yo, one second. Lante, can you make sure that the, the, the uh, mic isn't in his face? Because it kind of, he, you know, I'm sorry, bro. Just want to make sure it ain't in his face. Like it's not covering his face. It's good. All right, bet. Um, so jumping back in, yo, how are you with like 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 we like you said we met a, a minute ago and the music was good then, but like how do you think you how far have you grown as an artist and what are some of the things that you can specifically point out and be like yo damn back then I was doing this and now I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Wow, I grow so much as an artist. Um. Now I finally just, just constantly, to be honest with you, bro, I think I found myself, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, as far as in my music, you Damn. know what I'm saying? Like, I was torn between like, all right, I want to be like this and I want to be like this, but, you know, I listen to this type of music, but I want to make this type of music, you Damn. know what I'm saying? I was just caught in a crossfire and I kind of just was like, yo, you could do whatever the fuck you want to do. Bro, let's talk about that for a second, right? Listening to one type of music, but wanting to make a different type of music. Right. Like, how do you differentiate and how do you come to terms with yourself and being like, yo, this is what I like, but this is not what I want to make. Right. Um, honestly, because, you know, the music that I like is kind of more of a feeling type of thing. Something what type like, of music is it? I like R&B music. Okay. I like, you know, music that just makes you feel good. You right. know what I'm saying? That like, old school probably. Right. Vibe. You know what yeah. I mean? The 90s music. Yeah. I like... You know, some artists now like Brent, Fayez, you know, niggas that just kind of like, you know what I mean? Can make you feel good, mm -hmm. put you in a different mood. Like you know Trap saying? Soul. Right. Yeah. Bryson is my guy. You feel what I'm saying? That's just the music that I listen to. That's what I like to make. That's what I like to hear. But when I'm in the studio, it's like this big gutter. You know what I mean? It's like, bah, put the Trap shirt on, you know, where the 808's at. And that's just because that's who I am. That's what I'm around. That's my environment. You know what mm. I'm saying? So, grown as an artist before, it was like, well, I want to make music for the streets, and it's like, but I listen to music for the women all day, and Maybe you kind of just make one music for the women, right? It just made me want to make more music for the women, and then when I tried to make music for the women, it was like niggas was like, ah, we ain't ready for that yet, bro. We really we we want big gutter, so I just feel like now it's like, you know what, y'all gonna get what y'all asked for, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and eventually y'all gonna get to see my full potential as an artist, who Benny Vega is, but for right now. I'ma drill you, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm I'ma just keep it gangster and get the streets what they want. So you so you doing drill music right now? You could say that. I'm in the I, to be honest with you, my man just said it to me the other day. I don't want to discredit him. Because he kind of just threw it in my mind, like, yo, bro, we listened to one of my songs. And he like, yo, this is like Harford County drill music. You mm. feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, every place got their drill and music. I was just about to say, you that, know what I mean? And it's crazy. like, bro, this is our drill music though. Like, this is the way we make it. And when he said it to me, it was like, Yo, that was dope as shit, bro. Like that made a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to bro. And um, that's just where I'm at with it right now. Was how do you define drill music? Because like you said, every every place got their separate drill music. Of course, you got Chicago. I think they 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 spearheaded that. Mm -hmm. And then of course you got uh New York drill music. And then you can't forget about UK drill music. Right. With the how originators. You, yeah, the originators, right? So like, how do you um, what's the difference between each area and the drill music that they make? Um. To be honest, specifically you, Harvard County, since we, since you sounds hear. sounds. If you ask me, sounds is what really define the drill in your music. Mm. When you hear that Chicago, tss, 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 you know what I mean. You, okay. you you know, oh, this is a Chicago beat. Okay. When you hear that that distorted eight hundred eight sound, you know this is a New York yeah, drill New York, beat. Yep, mm -hmm. So when you hear them eight hundred eights coming in and they offsetting and they, you feel me? You kind of feel like it's kind of like an offbeat sound, but it's you on beat with it. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, this is Harford County. This is where, you know, this is that big gutter sound right here. And that's where I'm at with it right now is just I'm originating my sound. I want to just stick to where I'm comfortable, where my fans are comfortable, and everybody can relate to this. You know Yo, what I'm saying? So I think it's so hard to find your sound. And so many young artists 
struggle with that? How were you able to find your sound? What are some things that you had to do intentionally to find your sound? Record. Mm. Record, record, record. Just keep practicing, keep listening. And I'm my biggest critic, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I listen to so much music and I'm so diverse with the music that, you know, it's like, I don't let myself fall short to nothing. It's like, ah, oh, that shit is whack. Throw that shit away, bro. I don't want to hear it no more. I don't want mm. to You know what I mean? I don't like that. So you don't get too caught up in, in the music itself? Nah. Because a lot of people, I think they, because we're creatives, like they say, right? We're creatives. We're sensitive about our shit. Right. A lot of times, um, you get caught in making something, you fall in love with it. Somebody say they don't like it, and it's hard to throw it away. Right. For you, I think it's maybe the opposite. It's like, man, I want to be successful. So if you don't like it, yeah. I'm going to throw it away and make something better. Right, right. Okay. And it's not even just more so with the consumer not liking it. Mm. If I don't like it, okay, it's like, I don't want to, I don't, you know what I mean? I could be in the studio, and my man could be like, bro, that shit hot. And I'm like, eh. It ain't hitting me okay. how I want it to hit, so I don't want to do it. You know what wow. I'm saying? And I'm big in the studio, too. It's like, I'll be doing a song, and I'll be just lose the feeling or lose that energy that I had when I was making that song. And it's like, I don't want to finish this song now. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go to another song. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm not feeling it right now, if I'm not locked in and my energy is all not here, the song ain't going to come out the way I want it to. That's a fact. Yo, so you, you talk, we talk about the studio a lot. You know, some people go to studios that they have in their homes mm-hmm. that they build themselves. Other people go to the studio that they got to pay for. Mm-hmm. What's the what kind of what kind of studio? What's, what's your environment in the studio? Is it one of those studios that you got to go to, pay for hourly? Um, um, I, I I go to hourly studios. Mm-hmm. The one I go to a lot is like is home. You know what I mean? Okay. That's like my home studio. It's like I could take my shoes off and walk around there with no shirt on if I wanted to. You know okay. what I mean? It's like, but to be honest with you, I would rather record at my home studios. Like mm-hmm. I have a studio at home. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I would rather record it. That's where I come up with my best stuff, if you ask me, because it's, it's no pressure. It's mm-hmm. just like I got all day to sit in here, you know what I mean, and record music versus paying $200, 200 $300 for four hours of studio time and some artists don't come prepared, you know what I mean, mm. to the studio with a song on their phone and a beat ready to go, you know what I'm saying? Some artists want to come and be creative at the studio, like myself. I like to come to the studio and catch vibes and get ideas here while we're focused on the moment. Not cause Sometimes like when I'm at home and I might be listening to a beat and write a song to it, by the time I got to the studio and wanted to record it, it might not be the same. Mm. My energy might be different. Right. Something could have thrown me off in the day that just like, I, I'm not feeling the way I was feeling when I wrote the song, and I get the studio and record a whole new song. You know what I'm saying? So when you in them, the, the the home environment, right where you're most comfortable, do you find sometimes that you're falling in a track that you're only making the music that you're comfortable with, and you don't have nobody challenging you to make it better? Also, almost. And it's not necessarily because I'm I, I always I'm always with friends. I'm always with people that's like, bro. This okay. is hot, bro. That's not, bro. You need to go harder, bro. Mm. Stop singing so much, bro. Take this away. You know what I mean? I'm always with my my critics, my friends. They always with my ass. You know what I'm saying? So even before, even when I'm done, I might just send a song to a friend, like, bro, what's up? Or yo, bro, pull up on me. I got some new shit. I'm working okay. on. Come, 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 listen to this. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. So I really am very open to criticism. I'm very open to a nigga being like, you know what I mean? Ah, speed that up, stop that up. Because I'm learning. I'm still learning how to be an artist. I'm still learning. Everything I can with music, you know what I'm saying? Yo, it's it's I'm the shit you're talking about is like it's like fucking Bible verses almost, right? Because <laughs> it's so important. But at the same time, we can't ignore the other side. So right. sometimes it's great to listen, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes we gotta know who to listen to and when not to listen and when to go to go with our gut. How right. do you deal with those things in those in them certain times? How do you know who to listen to? How you know when is now? Nah, I'm not gonna listen at this moment. What 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 are some things that make you say no? Um just being comfortable in myself first mm. off and also just you know like i said i know music i know when i want i got an ear for something and it's like sometimes like you said my friend might be like bro that was hot and i don't like it and i might be like bro this shit is fire and he mm. like eh, it ain't hitting me the same way so it's really all in you follow your gut that's number one follow your instinct because people will project their fears through you. Damn. So you might do something that's a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? And somebody might be like, oh, I don't like it because it's different. It's mm-hmm. like, they don't not like it because it's not good. They just aren't used to it. You feel what I'm saying? So you just gotta be willing to, to go on a leap and put your 
your faith, your craft, your ideas on the line and let people have at it because that's what they're for. So what in, in what moments do you decide to listen to somebody? If somebody say you're singing too much, in what moments do you decide to listen? When, to be honest, most of the time you just know. Like, okay, you're right, bro. You know what I mean? Okay. I kind of thought that as well. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, it was in the back of my mind too. You know what I mean? I'm not just... And then sometimes it's like, I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. I wanted to sing too much on this, bro. So, you know what I mean? Whether you like it or not, somebody will. That's when you're going with your gut. That's when I'm going with my gut, though. So, so it's it's all just how you feeling, how it's going in the moment. Who's giving you the advice? That's a big thing. If not, I am wanting to say that I don't listen to people that don't make music because mm-hmm. I got friends that don't make music that just know good music like I know. Right. But most of the time, I like to take advice from other people who are doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? Especially engineers and producers who are better with certain things on the computer than I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would definitely take advice from them all the time. And that's really where I was going at with the just the studio question, because I know a lot of times people have those home studios, but they don't have an engineer mm-hmm. that might be there that can help them out. And I know a lot of times when I when I hear my, my friends that make music that go to these studios that's not in the home, they say, yo... Your engineer is your best friend because they are, they're constantly pushing me to be better. Facts. And I know I have a friend, a really close friend, like a brother, who records at home by himself all the time. And I'm like, yo, I kind of wish he would go in a studio because if it's, if it's like this on his own, mm-hmm. imagine if he had if that. He, somebody engineer. that know how to press that button that he might not know. Exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? And that's all that is. It's just... I know how to record myself. You feel what I'm saying? But sometimes when I go to that studio and I'm with that guy who just knows uh, he's an engineer mm. he's not an artist he doesn't rap he doesn't shoot videos he doesn't he is an All engineer he does is listen he's an engineer <laughs> that's what he does right so who am i to tell this man his uh, he, he might not you know what i'm saying nevertheless he might say something to me and be like yo let me press this key and i listen and it's like i don't like the no i don't like the way that sounds mm-hmm. so i didn't shit his own i didn't shit on his idea and tell him yo don't fucking suggest nothing to me I took his idea and it was like, oh, I don't like the sound. And we might come to a mutual agreement where he might press another key and it's a better, you know what I mean? So it's definitely important to just have that balance of studios that definitely. you're going to, not just all the, all the time at home if that's what you're comfortable right. with. And a lot of times I record at home and I'll go to the studio to get it mixed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'll okay. go and get it mixed and mastered at the studio so we can hear it on them big speakers. I can get input from people, you know what I'm saying? And before we get the final cut, I'm going to be somewhere where we could all chime in you know no, what that makes sense yo bro i feel like we could talk forever because just like i've watched you grow right like i've seen the music that you've been make, making and things like that so for people that don't know vinnie vega right now what are you what are you doing with your music and what like what where you going at what are you doing what you working on 2021 is big that's all i want to say 2021 i'm shitting if you was hating you're gonna hate harder if you was watching you're gonna watch harder because like I said, I found myself. I found I just finally can put everything behind me right now that was holding me back, hindering me, keeping my brain and my mind unfocused on what's important to me in life. You feel what I'm saying? And right now I'm fighting the clock. I don't have time to waste on anything else more important than what I want to do in life. You feel what I'm saying? So at first I wasn't going I wasn't going to ask you about this because I'm like, you know, I want to talk about the music, but I feel like it's so many artists that can learn from me right now, right? I feel like a lot of artists have things that's going on outside of the music that's holding them back. What was holding you back and how did you get out of that? <sighs> Honestly. Um, you know, I got I got children, you know what I'm saying? That's I won't say they hold me back, but sometimes they're more important yeah. than of being course. in the studio, yeah. shooting a video, you know what I'm saying? And it's a sacrifice at the end of the day, because sometimes I might rather go to the studio than to be dad right now, but they come first. I wasn't, you know There's what I'm responsibility saying? That responsibility that I got. I have to take care of that. And, um, you know, I lost my grandfather to coronavirus yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. last year. You know what I'm saying? Lost another family member to diabetes. You know what I mean? I lost a brother to the streets. You know what I mean? Drugs. So it's so much that could just knock you off, bro, to just make you be like, man, I don't even want to do this shit. No, is this even important to me right now? Is this even what I should be focused on? You know what I mean? With the age that I'm at, with the things I could be focused on, going to buy a house, Mm -hmm. getting into real estate, looking for a career. But this is what I want to do in life. This is my passion. There's nothing in life that can be like, yo, you don't want to do music. You know what I'm saying? So to all artists, young artists, old artists, people who've been doing this for 10 years, artists that's just starting, 
do you. You know what I mean? Be humble. Believe in yourself for the end, most and foremost, and just do you. You know what I mean? But what are some key steps that they can take? Right. For example, you might have to. Let's say you might have have your uh your kids at home, right? Mm-hmm. You really want to record, but you got to watch the kids. You got to make sure home is right. Is there anything that you could give artists a key takeaway? Maybe like you said, you might have to invest in a, a home studio, mm-hmm. so that way you can do both. You can have your family right here and still record. What are some things that you did to help you come out of your situations, even family members passing, and just you, you, you going through what you're going through mentally, man? How do you come out of that? Um, being strong. That's number one. Faith in God. There that's number go. one. There that's number one, bro. Faith in God. Being strong is number two. But how do you be strong though? How like how 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 did you be strong in your moments of hardship? Me to be honest with you, I got so many people that depend on me that mm. I just didn't have time to bask in what was going on. I didn't have time to fucking mope around and be angry at anybody else because I got a seventeen year old little brother who just who just got a full ride scholarship to college. You know what I'm saying? That I'm on his ass. Like I'm his dad. I make sure this nigga does. School working, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You want Jordans and shit, you know what I'm saying? Because he's doing things in life that's not me. I got a five-year-old son that's like, he wants to do music, that he wants to shoot videos, who is infatuated with YouTube. So I got to take away just being big gutter in the streets to being a dad and, and teaching, you know what I'm saying? And I had to just realize that it wasn't about me. My life isn't about me, you mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? And this moment that I realized that I got this little girl, that little boy, this kid, and that all watching me and making sure that I'm moving the right way, that shit just kind of makes you feel like, you know, so I got something to live for. It sounds like being strong is just understanding that it's a bigger picture. It's, a it's big, bigger than me. Big, right? Literally, literally. So you said, number one is putting God first, of course. Definitely. Then being strong, a.k.a. Being, having a bigger picture, understanding the bigger picture. How else would you say you got out of, um, out of your hard times when you was in them? Believing in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, that confidence, yeah. Believing in myself was big. Reading. I okay. did a lot of reading, yo. 48 Laws of Power, 33 Strategies of War. It don't sound like books that might be con- your contrast most interesting or right in what's going on necessarily, but those are just mentally building books. Yeah. That when I was felt like I was down, I would just go learn. I would mm. just read something to just enlighten me. Just be like, damn, man. now I can fucking talk about this with my friends all day. You know what I mean? Like, mm. bro, I read this today in a book. You know what I mean? Just to get your mind off of being down. And like I said, I had to beat it for my mom. My grandmother, you know what I'm saying? It just, I'm that person in my family that it's like, if I was down and moping about this shit, then everybody else is just like a train effect. Everybody's right. going to be hurting and you know what I'm saying? So I think it's definitely important of just having a part, having a place or something where you can decompress, right? Either if it's reading or if it's going to the gym. You know what I'm saying? Or if it's that even too. That meditating. Was, that was a big that was big for me. Right. So I feel like a lot of people forget they have to decompress. They don't always want to work, 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 work. When mm-hmm. it's like, bro, you gotta sometimes you gotta take a step back mm-hmm. to get some you time, yeah, right? And that's definitely. okay. Definitely. And another thing I think personally is like, you know, therapy, bro. Like I feel like a lot of people, a lot of black, like we started this conversation talking about the culture is so mm-hmm. much bigger than us. And that's just true. Like mm-hmm. we go through so much trauma. We see trauma every day from our friends dying to shit on the internet that we really don't, that's not normal, Mm -hmm. but we see it and we we normalize it. Mm -hmm. And then we, it's like, we desensitize everything that we see that's supposed to be sensitive. Right. So I feel like we do have to take a step back. Crazy that you say that therapy, yo, because I literally, it was seven o'clock this morning, y'all with my mans, he just got off of work. We talking, yo, and I literally asked this man, I'm like, bro, would you ever do therapy, yo? And Mm -hmm. I say that because me and this, this is somebody I know too, like we've been through some shit since we were, kids that you most like you said we didn't have to go through those things we mm-hmm. shouldn't have had we to shouldn't go we shouldn't things, go through these shit, but we stuff. had to you know what i'm saying and it's nobody to blame for that that's the first thing i feel like a lot of people in our culture want to do is blame somebody for the reason why they are this way mm-hmm. when in our reality we could say okay this person could have did a little bit better but we're capable of doing whatever we want to do bro right we all got the same 24 hours in a day that's a fact and i feel like that's what a lot of men, women, I feel like they can do it a little differently, but men need to feel, be get more in tune with themselves mm-hmm. and go talk to that lady, bro. It's crazy because, or or man, I have a therapist. Um, my therapist is a guy. Shout out mm-hmm. to Marcus. Um, but you know, I feel like 
to be honest, I think women are just so much ahead of us. Mm. Like they are in tune with themselves mm-hmm. already. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Not saying that they don't have places to grow, but for the most part, they in tune with themselves. They mm-hmm. in tune with them, their feelings and things like that. Men, we're just coming around. We're right. just coming around understanding that it's okay to be sensitive, that it's okay to to be in tune with our feelings and how we feel, things like this that. This new generation, though, I don't know if they feel that. You don't think so? I don't think they feel that. Mm. Like we grew up, differently you know what i'm saying in our generation we grew up like i said we grew up on r&b music mm. and dancing and no social media you feel what right, i'm saying right so it's a little bit easier for us to tap in with ourselves because we just come from a different area where these kids is like you can't even tell a little nigga like anything without him taking it personal and mm. like thinking he's got to kill you because you told him his hat was whack or you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's anything of the sort it's like it's so much more emotional now with these young dudes, that's like, ah. Yeah, it's like almost too emotional. It's, it? it's way too emotional for me. It's like, you know. It's we got to have a balance. We got to have a balance. But we're going to get there eventually. What, uh, what, what are you working on right now, though, music-wise? Like, what are some, you have any prize that you work on? You got some yeah, hell singles yeah. that's out? Um, I got Tax Season 2 on the way. Um, I'll probably drop that. I want to drop it today, but I'll probably drop it. Mid February, end of February, you know what I'm saying? Drop tax season two. What makes like, you want to wait? Um, tax season. <laughs> you okay. know what I mean? It's just the okay, com- I got kind it. of the it concept. Makes sense. Of okay, it. okay. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm gonna drop two singles before I drop the album. So I'm gonna drop uh, a video. I'm probably gonna do Friday coming up, and then I'll probably drop a video again on February 6th. So I'm gonna just do it like that. Do drop two singles right now. Um, two videos, and then um, I'm gonna drop my album tax season two. March 9th, and then from then on, I feel like every 30 to 60 days, I want to give the streets, you know, five, six songs, mm. two, three videos. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be consistently working. Yo, year. how important is it to, to, to follow the songs with visuals? Because I feel like that's huge now. Like, right now, I feel like every shit, I'm, I think eventually we're going to start seeing visual albums, honestly. Facts. Like, how important is it to drop these visuals with, with these songs? It's super important because you're getting a lot of your monetization streams through YouTube nowadays. Right. So I have to feel like that's, you know, you're not dropping videos, that's you missing streaming. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's miss, you missing, missing money. Monetar- you missing money, <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? So it's, it's, it kind of correlates with you dropping music, you gotta drop the visual to it. And I think that's where we are now in the culture and, and, and in the craft is, they wanna see it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? You talking about doing this and doing that, they wanna see you doing it, you know what I mean? So it, it's all about, uh, how you say it? Um, you know, being right to your consumer. You know what okay. I'm saying? Doing right by the people that are watching you and your fans and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yo, I appreciate you coming to uh, have to sit down with me, dog. Um, it's always great conversation when we talk, always, dog. Um, what is it? What is it? Anything else that you want the people to know that we probably ain't touch on? Um, I feel like we touched on a lot in a small time. Yeah, like, definitely. We definitely hit on some key points, important things. Um, to all artists coming up, you know, stay on your grind, stay at it. You know what I mean? You ever need anything? Reach out to me. For Vinny Vega on Instagram, I'm always willing to give information, resources to all up and coming artists. How you doing features now, man? Are like are the the price going up for the features, or you are you showing the streets love? Like how how is that working? Um, for my hometown, I show love. You feel me? For the streets, I show love. I ain't, I ain't nobody. You know what I mean? I'm on my come up. I'm on my grind. So I would never try to shit on anybody. So you want to do features? Reach out. Let's do it. You got a budget? Let's work with it. You know I'm doing packages right now for the verse and the video. So. Let's get together. All righty. My guy, Vinny Vega, Master Conversation Series, Mr. J. Hill. Yo, again, man, I appreciate it, dog. For real. I fuck with you, for real. I'm Always, here brother. Always, brother. My dog for life. Y'all support my boy, J. Hill. Y'all already know a pool game. All man. We out, man. <laughs>